ナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナマンダーナマンダーナマンダーナマンダー。
Let's put our hands together in God's show. There is no fear for one whose mind is not filled with desires. A mind unruffled by the vagaries of fortune, from sorrow freed, from defilements cleansed, from fear liberated. This is the greatest blessing. The words of Chakamuni Buddha. Namo Amidabut. Namo Amidabut. Namo Amidabut. Hey, good morning. Thank you and welcome again to this first Sunday service of this new month of October. Three more months and we say adios, sayonara, goodbye to year 2021. Summer officially ended last month after Labor Day. As we look back on a not so wonderful and happy summer as you had liked it to be, let us not forget that many of our fellow human beings worldwide who have succumbed to this terrible disease of the coronavirus and give thanks that due to our good karma so far, we have been able to keep ourselves free from getting infected. It's quite scary when we think of what's been happening around the world. To have a deadly disease causing virus remaining unchecked and seem to be adapting well to survive is especially disturbing because it is a direct threat to our very existence. Indeed, anything that threatens our comfort, well-being and survival is something scary and unpleasant, one that we need to avoid as much as possible. I'm sure all of us have had scary moments in our lives at some time or another, be it real or imagined, and they could range anywhere from a real threat, like feeling the shaking of a strong earthquake, the fury of the strong winds of a typhoon, or even seeing or encountering a small animal, which we perceive to be vicious or poisonous. My personal experience with that were snakes I encountered as a high school student while working in the rice fields back in my home country. Never mind whether those snakes were poisonous or not, I remember just running away from them with all my might. Or more recently, while serving at Makawa Honganji, I tried to kill a centipede which crawled in the kitchen while I was eating dinner. <laughs> it was huge and looked so menacing. I heard that centipede bites are very painful, so I was scared of being bitten on the foot. Fear plays a very important part in our daily life and in human society as a whole. Fear comes in many shapes and forms, but it could be described as an unpleasant feeling of perceived risk or danger, real or not. It functions to make us alert and ready for action while expecting specific problems. Fear is generally a very uncomfortable feeling. Buddhists would therefore call it a form of suffering. We do not like to be afraid, but still our fears can keep us from harm. For example, as it make us hold back, avoid, get out of the way, or run when we see a snake or a fast moving car straight in our direction. So yes, we need to realize danger and be alert. But once we are alert, we cannot do much more than whatever we think is best in the situation. Similarly, many of us are afraid for quite irrational reasons, meaning of things that do not really pose any serious threat to us. For example, fear of spiders, centipedes, snakes, small enclosed or large spaces, and most irrational of all, fear of ghosts. For some strange reason, some people fear ghosts or the dead more than living people who can actually do them harm, physical harm. Life can become really difficult simply because illogical projections and delusions are taking over our normal rational mind and small things can begin to determine our whole life. These are known as phobias. They are irrational fears based on the exaggeration of the mind of things that aren't really 
physically threatening. Does any one of you have any kind of phobias? There are many types and all are called by fancy sounding Greek terms. I do have a few phobias of my own. And one of them is the fear of high places. It's called acrophobia. When I went to the top of the Empire State Building in New York City for the first time back in 1982 and looked down at the traffic below, I felt very scared and dizzy. My hands started to perspire a lot and I had trouble breathing. Now that's acrophobia. Before becoming a minister, I had a fear of speaking in front of people. This is called glossophobia. And I still haven't completely overcome this fear at all. I tend to stammer and talk fast when I am scared of speaking in public. Other examples of phobias are homophobia, which is the fear of homosexuals or gay people, xenophobia, fear of strangers or foreigners, and claustrophobia, fear of enclosed spaces. That's enclosed spaces, not fear of Santa Claus. I hope none of you has ecclesiophobia, which means fear of going to church or temple services. And as for husbands mostly, there's a phobia called enterophobia, meaning fear of one's mother-in-law for one reason or another. So a lot of our suffering as individuals and as a society is caused by fear. In fact, according to Buddhism, fear is at the very root of ego and samsara. As is often said, fear lies at the basis of all religions. In ancient times, when humans were still gatherers and hunters, little was understood of the world around them. So without understanding the causes for many everyday experiences, there was logically existential fear. People in prehistoric times did not comprehend the forces of nature well. The lightning, for example, was perceived as a bolt of punishment from the gods for wrongful things humans have done. Earthquakes and other natural disasters too were viewed as divine retributions. And so some religions were founded on them, attributing these unknown natural phenomena to be the work of gods or other powerful supernatural beings. Fear became the basis for the development of human civilization. Fear of famine, for example, led to the development of agriculture, which more or less assured a steady food supply. Fear of destructive nature of earthquakes, hurricanes, or warfare led to the invention of better materials for buildings, homes, defensive structures, and so on. Rational fear can be healthy when it keeps us alert to dangerous situations for ourselves and others. It makes us more careful in everything we do in our daily lives to avoid hurting ourselves or others or cause discomfort. Fear of possible threat to our health or well being is what compels us to seek medical attention right away when our bodies start to tell us that something's not right through the feeling of pain or discomfort. Buddhism, to an extent, is based on fear. The fear of suffering. The historical Buddha went out on his spiritual quest when he realized that everybody is subject to discomfort, problems, and pain. And with the goal to find a way to end it all together, he discovered a way out. This is the Noble Eightfold Path. Right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. In the Buddhist context, there is one type of fear that we even need to cultivate. This is the fear that if we don't do anything about this, we will remain in the cycle of rebirth and after rebirth in lives filled with problems and suffering. We need to be ever mindful or fearful of the consequences of our unwholesome actions and try to avoid them to us 
so as not to sow the seed of suffering later on in our lives. And at the same time, we should never fear to do what is wholesome and beneficial to ourselves and others, even if it, there are those who try to discourage us from doing so. We should not give in to irrational fears of failure or being criticized or ridiculed if our intentions are noble and sincere for the good of others. The ultimate fear is the fear of death, which results in the loss of our ego and everything we have. This fear of death is nothing but a form of attachment to our life, our concept of self or ego, and all our possessions. But it is a universal fear among all sentient beings nonetheless. We human, being the thinking rational creatures that we are and have more worldly attachment than animals, fear death the most. Animals can sense their impending death by instinct, but without the attachments of the human mind, it is logical to say that, we are, that they are better able to accept their own deaths. Although we don't really know for sure how animals think or react to such situations. What makes death so frightening to humans is the fear of the unknown. What lies beyond the worldly life after physical life ends? That is the fear when we think that there is nothing more beyond death, that it is game over after we take over our last breath and our body ceases its biological functions. But if we think in terms of the possibility of rebirth and the reality of the pure land, as what Jyotish Shinji Buddhism teaches us, then physical death is but a transition, that it is not the final state of all corporeal beings. If the ultimate nature of all beings is that of Buddhahood, a purely spiritual state of existence, then death should never be feared, but calmly accepted when it comes. However, it is not an easy thing to do. Our blind passion, our desire to live as we are now, our attachment to our lives and possessions is not easy to overcome. Hence, death is always fearful to us. The fear of the unknown, of what happens after death, is often described as the darkness of the mind or heart. Mumyo no yami in Japanese. And it is what keeps some people from dying calmly or having a peaceful transition. Amida Buddha is often described as the Buddha of infinite light and life, of wisdom and compassion. And it is this light of the Buddha's wisdom that dispels the darkness of the mind. The light of wisdom illuminates and banishes all our fears as they are known and brings us to the realm of ultimate reality, which is the pure land. When that light removes that darkness of mind, all doubts are eliminated and our birth in the pure land is assured. We no longer say, I believe there is a pure land, but instead boldly assert that I know there is a pure land. Believing and knowing are two different things. They are not the same. For example, right now, we look outside and see if it's a nice day and the sun is shining. If the sun is indeed out and it's a nice sunny day, we do not say, I believe it's a nice day and the sun is shining brightly. Rather, we say with firm conviction, I know it's a nice day and the sun is shining. Same thing with our notion of Amida and the Pure Land. If we can say without the slightest doubt that we know Amida and the Pure Land exist and not just believe in them, that is the hallmark of the interesting mind for Shinjin. At that one thought moment for each and end, we join the stream of non retrogression meaning our birth in the pure land is assured and there is no turning back anymore. We lose the fear of death. There were actually Jodo Shinshu people in old Japan called Nyokonin, who are described as very assured confident and deep in their conviction of Amida Buddha and the Pure Land. The way they express their feelings through poems or passages or live their lives 
conveys unshaken firm acceptance of the reality of the Buddha and the pure land. For these Myokonins, there was no more fear, not of death, not of rebirth in the cycle of suffering, but instead there was the peace and tranquility in their present lives and the assurance of the same peace and tranquility that awaited them in the pure land of Amida Buddha. Let's conclude this service by putting our hands together in the show and reciting the Namo Amida Buddha. 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 Namo Amida Buddha.